I'm going to be honest. At the start of 2022, I legitimately thought that spring term was going to suck. Going to school during the summer just felt like torture. I didn't just want to be studying constantly while everybody else was going out and having fun. I talked with a lot of upper years and they always tell me the same thing. Spring term is going to be the best term you'll ever have or you're going to get the most out of it. And I didn't believe them at first. Now I realize I had to witness it to believe it. And I want to make this message spread right now. Waterloo spring term is underrated. And today I'm here to talk about why that's the case and also talk about my experiences in my 2B term as a biomedical engineer at Waterloo. And hopefully you enjoy this video. So the first thing you're gonna notice is that spring term has a totally different vibe compared to that of fall and or winter, such that there's gonna be less people on campus, meaning that there's gonna be way more opportunities for you to explore the campus, go outside, etc. Another out of left field thing I really enjoyed was that the sun wouldn't go down until as late as 9 p.m., which is something I personally enjoyed because during like the fall or winter term, the sun would go down, for example, at around 5 p.m., which was somewhat early. And at times uh, my energy would be drained out and I wouldn't be able to do as much. But in the springtime, the sun is usually up and I was more motivated to finish my work and eventually like do whatever I want afterwards. So speaking of getting my work done, that was something that I had to really focus on managing that term. Because during spring term, that was essentially my first fully in-person term of sorts since COVID sort of affected my previous terms at university. As a result, classes, midterms, and exams were taking place in person. So I had to double down on managing myself, whether that was buying food, finding places to study, getting good sleep, getting the classes on time since classes were no longer recorded for people who missed classes due to COVID and such like that. So specifically for studying, I basically did a lot of my studying on campus and I was trying to find a place that best suited me. But mainly I did a lot of my work in these three places, which included the engineering building or otherwise known as E5 or E7, the DC building, and the Student Life Center. So E5, E7 has a lot of spaces around the building to study in. There are things such as quiet study rooms, lounges. There are small spaces tucked away for people to work in without people bothering them. Now with DC, it feels kind of dead at first when you first walk in, but honestly, it's a great place to study if you want to be in a complete silence from everybody. I can recall lots of times of me leaving my apartment to go to DC, particularly at night so I can get work done or study for something in complete peace. I would only recommend studying there if you really need to get something done for some hard deadline that's coming up or if you wanna study in complete silence and or peace. And as for the Student Life Center, I can't really talk about that one much compared to the other two buildings I mentioned, but what I do know is that there are tables on the second floor that you can study on which I've done a few times. And it's also good to study if you wanna get a quick meal such that there are a lot of food places on the main floor of the Student Life Center. So afterwards, when you finish studying, you can eventually go down and grab a quick bite and such. So speaking of food, I would also recommend to try out as many food places as possible around Waterloo, whether that's through the campus, Leicester Street, or downtown Waterloo. I tried eating at as many food places as possible to try out a diverse range of meals, whether that was a poke bowl, fried chicken, shawarma, or like a turkey and bacon sandwich, uh, believe it or not. I really enjoyed the variety of food that they provided, and I'm still curious to try out new places in future terms. So now I want to talk about my experiences socializing with other people this term, or more in general, the social life at Waterloo, specifically during the spring term. This part is the main reason why I wanted to make this video in the first place and why I think spring term is underrated, specifically like the social aspect of being on campus during the spring term. To sum this up, this was essentially my favorite part of 2022. Yes, it's even better than these things. I know, shocking. If I'm being honest, I never did much socializing in high school because I was either studying a lot for whatever course I was doing or I was doing a lot of extracurricular activities such that I could have a higher chance of getting into a university such as Waterloo. But in those four months I had that term, 
It just felt so good to go outside and hang out with my friends since it was good weather most of the time. And there's a lot of cool things that you could have done there, especially since it was a spring term. It was usually warm and sunny out. So there are a lot of opportunities for me and my friends to just do stuff and go nuts. It's also really easy to go around the campus and or the city of Waterloo since students are given their own walk card, which is a type of card given for students at Waterloo during the school year in which you can take free bus rides or trains around the city of Kitchener Waterloo as long as you have that card. There were a lot of fun things that I did that summer, whether that was watching movies, I did escape rooms, I went to house parties, joined a Frisbee team, ate at a lot of restaurants around Waterloo with my friends, and so much more like that. And every Friday night, it felt like a new adventure I would go on. And once the adventure was done, I would go back to my apartment feeling tired, but super giddy that I had new memories that I could cherish for many years to come. If I could give you a more specific highlight of my spring term, there was this thing called Eng Day, which happens every year, which is sort of like a social gathering where all engineering students wear white apparel, such as the one I'm wearing right now, and get sprayed by purple powder throughout the day. And all of us were drenched in purple by the end, and everybody would just be vibing to music, taking pictures at photo booths. Uh, there was a lot of inflatables that you could play games on, whether that was human foosball, there was a dunk tank, things such as that. And it's super fun and super vibey. I would highly recommend doing this if you're an engineering student. It was even more memorable for the fact that it was also during the Rogers power outage. Yeah. And Rogers decided to take a day off and I didn't have any service throughout the entire day. I couldn't call anybody, couldn't text anybody, literally could not use my phone, which sucked but it was still fun during Ends Day. And there was also another memory that I had such that I was vibing with my friends throughout the entire day, especially that day being one after one of the midterms that I took. And during that day, we ate at a restaurant and then late at night, we went to a park and started like sipping drinks and bumping music on a speaker. And then right after that, after like a few hours, we went to a party at my apartment to cap off the night. And that entire experience was probably my favorite part of spring term, which is something that I remember dearly. So if you are studying during spring term, I know at first glance studying during the summer might suck, especially when all your other friends from different universities are just like having fun on their own without school. But I guarantee you that there's a lot of good benefits of being on campus during the spring term compared to that of the fall and or winter term. There will be a lot of opportunities for you to make these insane memories with your friends throughout the term. And you're gonna crave to have this type of term once it's over, I guarantee you that. So if you are studying spring term, make the most of that opportunity if given the chance. So now I wanna mainly talk about the courses that I took during my 2B term in the biomedical engineering program. So the courses that I mainly took that term were that of circuits, instrumentation and measurements, physiological and biological systems, prototyping, simulation and design, linear signals and systems, and statistics and experimental design. So to start, I'll talk about BME 294 or specifically the circuits course in my program. So this course deals with learning about different types of circuits and how they function. And mainly 294 is essentially an introductory to circuits, such that you're learning about topics such as voltage, current, and resistance at first, but eventually these topics get more complex, such that you're learning about things such as transistors or diodes. It was a fair course in terms of difficulty, such that there are a lot of course deliverables, such as quizzes and design assignments, that allowed you to get a lot of easy marks in that course. The professor specifically was really beneficial in terms of getting help from about understanding certain concepts. There was also a circuits lab course that made us build actual real life circuits using our circuit knowledge that we used during BME 294. And we had to build these circuits using the stuff in this lab kit that we had to buy. The lab kit itself has a lot of components that are used to build the necessary types of circuits in our labs. There are resistors of different magnitudes, capacitors, diodes, a mini microphone, wires to connect components together, and the breadboard, which is where we place all the wires and components to create our circuit. So we would do these labs in partners and we would have to create these circuits ranging from voltage dividers to low pass filters. These labs weren't easy to do as for the first time for our cohort, we actually had to build something physically rather than just simply using a lot of online tools to like do our labs during remote learning. And it took us a long time to just understand how to use the various devices found in the lab room 
just to ensure the calculations that we found in the lab so that they could be precise as possible. There was a pre-lab, an in-lab, and a post-lab exercise that made up one full lab, and each lab pair essentially had to submit each component at specific deadlines. The in-lab exercise specifically, we had to submit by the end of each lab, meaning it forced everybody to get stuff done as soon as possible and just submit as much as you could, even if the work wasn't that great. And I personally would like to thank my lab partners specifically because they really helped me with learning how to build these actual circuits while we were working on these labs and I learned a lot from them. So thank you so much. One of the things we actually made was build a microphone, which actually measured the frequency of someone's voice, which can be shown here. So next, I want to talk about my regular anatomy and or physiology course known as BME 2A4, as well as the separate lab component that kind of correlates to it. So in this course, we learned about the different components of the body and how they function, which range from organs such as eyes and ears to learning about organ systems such as circulatory and respiratory systems. There were a lot of deliverables that we had to do, which took a fair share of time, but were doable to say the least. And there was also a final test that we had to memorize all the content throughout the course but thankfully it was online, so that was the main reason why I passed. Now for the corresponding lab course, this is where I did a lot of cool stuff. So the lab course in general is split into two parts. There's an anatomy lab and a physiology lab. For the anatomy lab, we got to work with actual donated human bodies within the expansion building on campus. The main point of the anatomy labs was to identify different parts of the nervous musculoskeletal system and the circulatory system by analyzing these dead bodies, whether that was a specific nerve, artery, or muscle. I unfortunately can't show myself in these labs because of ethical reasons and to respect the people who did pass away and were respectful enough to donate their bodies for us to do these labs. So the hardest part of this course was mainly just memorizing all the specific parts of each particular system because we had a final bell ringer exam in which we had to eventually identify specific parts that were given to us and we were given this lab book in order to memorize this stuff. And we had to memorize parts such as, um, hold on, hold on. Like the glenoid labrum and the medulla oblongata. Yeah, that's it. Like eventually I got the hang of it, but I had to memorize a lot of stuff for this bell ringer. Then there were the physiology labs, which took place in a different building known as STC. No, not that one, only Toronto people will get that. There we go, that's better. I meant the labs took place in the science teaching complex. We did a lot of experiments that involved measuring specific quantities that relate to different parts of the human body. For example, one of the things that our cohort did for one of the labs was record something called an electromyogram, which is, if you give me one second, is the total amount of asynchronous electrical activity in several muscle fibers. I'm only reading this off because I couldn't memorize it. Sorry. <laughs> Specifically, my lab group, which consisted of a few people, attached electrodes at locations around the knee and calf, while someone would lightly tap my Achilles tendon using a reflex hammer to sort of measure the response and force of the tendon tap. It was really an interesting experience to say the least, but thankfully my Achilles tendon is doing well and managed to survive it. So thank God for that. We eventually found out we had to write lab reports, which at first sucked but we were actually allowed to make these lab reports shorter than usual, which did make the process a bit easier. But there was also a lab exam of sorts where we had to memorize all the expected results, equipment and terminology from all of our labs, which was very difficult for me to do. Since if you mess up those lab results, then eventually messes up your understanding of each lab, which eventually messes up your lab exam overall. And it was especially true for me because I got COVID at that time, which made it very difficult for me to study since I was eventually like sick. I couldn't study. But despite that specific lab exam, I really did enjoy these biology labs, mainly because I finally got to do work associated with biomedical engineering. And that was something I always was looking forward to when I first applied to this program. Next, there's BME 261, which is essentially our prototyping and design course. So this course primarily focused on designing structures and devices, mainly by using things such as an Arduino Uno board and Python programming. There were a lot of assignments where we had to design specific things, such as a set of miniature traffic lights with an Arduino Uno board and a few LEDs and resistors or an analog light level sensor using the photoresistor. There were also times where I had to do some Python related tasks such that I was collecting sets of data involving ECG signals 
and convert that data into specific graphs and plots in order to show and illustrate unique relationships. So the main design project with this course associated with working with a group of people around five to six people and the main task was to create and pitch a device that would be able to assist someone with a particular physiological disorder or complication. For example, my group designed a wearable device that would be able to detect whether an individual has symptoms of sleep apnea or not. To create this device, there were a lot of things that needed to be done, which ranged from collecting sets of data associated with sleep apnea, creating a CAD design, getting the right Arduino devices in order to create the actual design of the device and more things such as that. It was a very difficult process, but we managed to finish our project and it was actually nice to kind of do some work associated with being a biomedical engineer. The one thing that was frustrating about this course was the fact that there were a lot of online tests and also a final in-person exam in which we had to memorize very specific concepts from slides that were given to us at the beginning of the term, which ranged in things such as Bluetooth, motors, Arduino, and more. It was honestly something that I didn't really enjoy that much because I was basically just blindly trying to memorize these specific keywords in order to do these tests, which became very tiring very quickly. But aside from that, this course really gave me an understanding of what designing and prototyping is like as an engineer. The next course I'll be talking about is BME252, otherwise known as Linear Signals and Systems. This course primarily deals with two specific components, signals and systems, and how they sort of relate to certain technologies that associate with signals. Basically a signal is anything that carries information or data, while a system is something that takes in an input signal and produces and or modifies an output signal. There was also a major group project where we had to design a signal processor for cochlear implants using a particular software known as MATLAB. There were a lot of phases for this project such that we had to find a lot of characteristics that would make our implant successful. And the MATLAB portion of the project was very daunting to do such that we had to learn all these new topics ranging from filters to subbands. And we eventually had to figure out ways in order to recreate the best possible sounds for our cochlear implants. And a lot of testing was needed. The content in this course starts out fairly simple, but does get harder over time. If you are taking this course, I would highly recommend you to watch YouTube videos that do go through topics associated with linear signals and systems. Also try going through as many tutorial problems as possible, as those problems may end up helping you in future assignments and exams in this course. The last course that I took was BME213, which was essentially my statistics course. In this course, I learned about the different ways to interpret and analyze data by things such as mean, median, and mode, as well as more complex topics such as confidence intervals. I can 100% say that this was the least stressful course that I took this term. All the quizzes, the midterm, and the final were all online. And that made it extremely beneficial in that I was able to use my notes throughout this course. The only slight challenge was that we had a group project where we had to create an experiment, run trials of that experiment, and do it based on certain factors. And then eventually our group would eventually find any type of relationships in our data based on the factors that we chose. Like our group did an experiment where we slid an object down a ramp to measure the distance that an object traveled based on specific textures of the ramp, different ramp angles, object weights, and things such as that. And that's mainly what I wanted to talk about today. I know spring term may seem daunting at first glance, but I guarantee you, you have to be there in order to experience the underrated aspects of it. Sure, there's still studying and work to be done as usual, but I guarantee you, it's gonna be a much better experience compared to that of fall or winter. And this entire idea had to be set eventually because it's really amazing. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you have an awesome day. Peace.